All right, so a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Well, it's actually 12.8 volts, 100 amp hours, nominal. Usually in these batteries, there are lithium iron phosphate cells, nominal voltage of 3.2. That's, this is a cell, positive, negative, a 12.8 volt battery pack, there are four of them wired in series, which means that the voltage increases every series, so four in series makes 12.8. Fully charged, you get 14.6 volts. And getting closer to 11 volts, your battery is pretty much dead. Now, inside the battery, there is something called a PMS that protects the cells from overcharging or over discharging. Usually it cuts the discharge at about 10.9-10.8 volts. In this case, you can see there's a 100 amp BMS which means you can draw 100 amps out of this battery continuously. You see this number says 1280 watt hours. You got 12.8 volts times 100 amp hours. 1,280 watt hours. Cool, right? Now, to calculate the load and runtime, there is a simple formula, which is watt hours battery divided by your load equals runtime. Okay, let's say you have a 60 watt, 12 volt mini fridge. For simplicity, let's assume our battery is 1200 watt hours divided by our mini fridge, which could be 60 watts. Every appliance has a wattage rating somewhere on the appliance. Then you get 20 hours. Specify that, which means from this battery, you can run a 60 watt load for 20 hours. Now, let's say you only got some LED lights. That's 10 watts. You can run them for 120 hours. This is for DC appliances connected directly to your battery. If you were to convert it to AC through an inverter, you would have to put into consideration that your inverter will give you about 10 to 15 
percent loss in your hours depending on the inverter and the efficiency so say you're running a laptop it draws 100 watts and you're using a 90 percent efficient inverter it would be 1200 times 0 0.9 divided by 100 watts which is your laptop battery inverter loss laptop that would give you 10.8 hours now the thing about lithium ion phosphate batteries is that it will give you almost about 100% of usable capacity, meaning you can use pretty much all of your 100 amp hours. Compared to a lead acid battery, which could only draw about 50 to 60% of the rated capacity without damaging the battery. Now, to keep your battery safe, Avoid putting it in an area where it could suffer extreme heat or extreme cold. If you're going to store it for a longer period, make sure the battery is about 50-60% state of charge. There are different ways you can charge your lithium ion phosphate battery. Great shocker coming from this channel is solar. Got your solar panel. Or plural going into a charge controller and into your positive and negative terminals charge controllers you've got your PWM or MPT Scratch the PWM because this is old technology, less efficient. Go for an MPPT solar charge controller. You can do AC charging at your household socket, plug it in, make sure it's a lithium ion phosphate charger, positive, negative. There we go. We got a 20 amp charger. You can charge your battery in about five hours. If you're in an RV or a camper van or something like that, you could use something called a DC to DC charger connected to your regular starter battery. It will be charged by your alternator and it will run through the DC DC charger and charge your lithium ion phosphate battery. Now some quick tips. Use 12 volt appliances when possible to avoid losses in DC to AC conversion. Size your inverter correctly to your needs. The bigger inverter will draw more power and find a more efficient inverter, preferably a pure sine wave inverter to take care of your appliances. Use as short and as thick cables as possible to reduce power loss in your cables and to reduce heat and fire hazards. A smart thing to do is to find a way to monitor your battery. Link to a simple monitor you can check out in another video. So are you planning to buy a lithium iron phosphate battery or do you already have one? And what do you use it for? I would really like to know. Leave a comment down below. And please don't forget to like, comment and or subscribe if you haven't already. It will really help me with the YouTube algorithm, as they say, check out these videos next because YouTube 
wants you to check them out. All right, until next time.